Hello, travelers. I wanted to take a minute just to talk about something a little different today. I've heard several stories now of people being contacted after they get off a princess cruise and being told that they still owe money on that cruise. The people who are contacting are saying they're from princess, but they're not. So this is a scam and this is something you really need to have a heads up on because it's happening increasingly. Uh, I heard about it initially from Let's Go Travel Tips channel and they were actually contacted by people that they who had been watching the channel who had had this experience and then they got a letter to their home address no less which means not only did they have the booking number because that is the one thing it always includes the booking number of the cruise they just got off of and it had information you know it said the booking number it said where the cruise went and it basically is trying to tell them oh you still owe money so um, we're going to conveniently let you pay us yeah so convenient the other uh, one I heard recently is that um, Don from Don's family vacation got a phone call and I believe I think uh, some of the older stories were text or email so obviously they're trying all the different methods of contact um, to get a hold of people uh, who just got off a cruise or fairly recently got off a cruise and they can hopefully scam money out of so I really wanted to talk about this so what's going on here is very likely a data breach on princess and I'm not sure if they know about it and haven't announced it yet or if they don't know about it but either way since it is still happening chances are the leak is not yet plugged and so the fact that they're getting personal information is most concerning to me. Carnival Corporation, which owns Princess, has had a couple of data breaches. Um, they had one, Carnival itself had one in 2020, and that was a ransomware case, but they also were able to get a copy of the data, and I believe it was customer data. And then Princess had one in May of 2019 where they definitely got data. So it would make sense that they had like home address or uh, phone numbers and stuff from those two data breaches. However, the booking number is what's most concerning because that means that they are still able to get in and get information on current bookings. Because I doubt very much that any of these people who just got off cruises had booked them four years ago when the data breach happened. So this is current information that they have. And it's something that they are using to try and get their victims to give them financial information so they can do maybe a wire transfer. They're trying to get credit card information so that they can, you know, do fraudulent charges. Or, you know, in these kinds of cases, this is called a social engineering attack. Um, they try whatever they think will work. So they may even offer something like gift cards, you know, buy X number of these gift cards and then read us the number and that will cancel it. And yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's not legitimate. It's a scam. My day job is actually in computer security. And so this is something that I have a fair amount of expertise in. And I really wanted to make sure that I got the word out that, you know, people need to have a heads up that this is targeting cruise passengers. And just because right now it's princess doesn't mean it's not going to be someone else because they tend to try and leverage this kind of information to anywhere they have access. So what can you do about it? Well, the first line of defense is to be very suspicious anytime you are contacted and you do not initiate the contact. Obviously, if you had called princess and said, you know, I, I need blah, blah, blah. Can you get back to me? Then that would be different. But the fact that they are pretending that, you know, you still owed money when you got off the ship is... <laughs> it's kind of amusing, really, because if, you know, anyone who's cruised before knows, cruise lines are really good at making sure they have access to your money. They are very good at making sure you set up some kind of an onboard account, which usually involves a credit card and may also involve you depositing actual cash if you don't do credit cards. But they keep very good track of what you owe so that, you know, if it didn't settle for any reason, 
when you try to disembark, they would divert you over to customer service to figure it out. They don't let you off the ship until they believe that you don't owe them any money. So the scammers calling back and saying, oh, no, you had a balance. It's not real. It's not true. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, I really encourage you to consider changing your password for your account with Princess, especially if you have reused that login and or password anywhere on the web, on the internet, anywhere. What we see with these kinds of things is once a criminal has stolen data from a company, especially if it includes things like login and password combinations, they will resell it as many times as they can find buyers out on the dark web. And the people who buy this information will then turn around and use that combination of login and password. Frequently, it's your email, which is, you know, pretty constant. You know, you're not changing your email every two seconds, right? And they will use that against other sites until they find some that it works on. And so that's why we tell you that password reuse is a really bad idea. The other thing I do tell people is to make more complex passwords. Make sure they are not combine, uh, combinations of information that can be found out about you on social media. And if you think about it, you know, things like your kids' birthdays, your dog's name, you know, your parents' names, any of that stuff can easily be found these days on social media. People don't think any, of anything, you know, of wishing your son, you know, a happy birthday on Facebook. Well, that's something that someone else can probably find as well, especially if you don't have much privacy settings on your social media, or if you are friends with someone who doesn't have good social media privacy settings, because it defaults to the most permissive of anyone in your network. So that is uh, another piece of advice. And then finally, I would really encourage you to consider a password keeper. I use one password, but you can use whatever you're you know, familiar with. And use that to keep track of your passwords and make them not words, basically. Not names, not words, um, not just numbers. Make them hard to crack. And for that, you really do need some kind of way of keeping your passwords. Now, if you don't want to do a password keeper, get one of those little notebooks and write every login and password in that and keep it in the same place in your house so that you can always find it. And that's a low tech way of doing the same thing. And it doesn't cost but the, you know, a little notebook. So anyway, um, yeah, this is my advice. You know, if any time in any context when someone is reaching out to you unexpectedly and trying to get some form of payment or data from you, view them with extreme suspicion. And make sure if you go and check out their claims from the original company that you don't use, any websites they give you and any phone numbers they give you because those are all going to be in their control. You need to actually go to princess.com or you can Google whatever company this is involving. I mean, it could be any company in your life. Um, and go there and, and contact their fraud department because they're the ones who should be able to look up what's going on and whether it's legitimate or not. So um, certainly in the comments, I would love to hear if you have been contacted regarding this or any other kind of scam like this. And if so, how you handled it. And uh, stay safe out there. Solo Sue signing off.